Hello everyone. Okay, we have been looking at infectious uh, diseases uh, that affect uh, children. And, uh, today we are looking at whooping cough. Right, my name is Jones, and uh, we are continuing class with uh, infectious diseases. So we are looking at whooping cough, please. So. Petusi, whooping cough, okay, also called petusis, we are saying is an acute respiratory infection. It is caused by Bordetella petusis, Bordetella parapetusis, and other bacteria like Bordetella bronchioseptica and adenovirus type 1, 2, 3, and 5 may also cause similar illness. It can occur at any age after birth because there is no intrauterine acquired protection. There is no transplacental passage of antibodies against the causative organism or agent either. So that's why this infection may occur even if the mother was immunized against it. The incubation period of this disease is between 7 to 14 days and many patients are under six years old that become affected with this disease. Overcrowding in communities in the, top, in the tropics exposes young infants early to high infection uh, pressure. There is more so in poorly ventilated homes since transmission is by droplet infection. Highest infectivity is the, in the early stage of the disease and attack rate is 80 to 100 percent. Severity of infection decreases with age and highest mortality is among infants worse in females. Follow, so now let's look at the pathogenesis of the disease. Following inhalation of infected droplets, the bacteria may attach to ciliated epithelial cells of the respiratory tract and multiply on the lining. Multiplications occur from the nasopharynx to the alveoli with severity in the bronchioles. This may then lead to an inflammation cascade of the mucosal lining. So accompanied by what I would say congestion within the respiratory tract because of the inflammation cascade that is happening, we see much mucus congestion and infiltration of mucosal lining with lymphocytes. This may narrow the lumen of the bronchioles and result in a condition we call atelectasis and emphysema in the areas of incomplete obstruction. Inflammation in the bronchioles weakens their walls, and this may lead to a condition known as bronchial ectasis, and may happen at a later date. The organism is believed to secrete an endotoxin at the site of their multiplication that is thought to cause the paroxysmal cough. Clinical presentation. This can be divided into three stages. We have the ketaro, paroxysmal, and the convalescent, each lasting approximately two weeks. CPC, ketaro, paroxysmal, and convalescent. All right, let's understand more what happens in the ketaro stage. So, this stage, the Ketaro stage, may last about two to three weeks, and it has an insidious onset with non-specific features like rhinorrhea, low-grade fever, sneezing, increased lacrimation, and conjunctival suffusion. What happens in the paroxysmal stage? That is the second stage. This stage may last two to four weeks, and it is characterized by 
a repetitive series of forceful coughs in a single expiration. Cough is associated with choking and vomiting afterwards. The production of sticky, stringy sputum, there is also a thin nasal discharge. After this, who occurs? A patient is going to have a cough. All right. Hoop is a massive inspiratory effort as air is inhaled forcefully through the narrowed bronchial tree. Does not occur up to age of two years. Instead, it is replaced by the period of apnea, prolonged and may cause sudden infant death. Hoop usually followed by vomiting and profuse sweating. The other things that we can see is confusion that may occur due to hypoxia and intracerebral hemorrhage. All right, so there is poor feeding by the infants and the vomiting will cause loss of weight, dehydration, and eventually the baby becomes malnourished. Intense cough and this, we are saying, results from increased abdominal pressure may result in umbilical hernia, inguinal hernia, and may, the infant may have lateral prolapse. Other things that we can be seen is increased venous pressure that leads to edema of the orbits and subconjunctival hemorrhage. You can also see ulceration of the frenulum of the tongue and the dyspaxis also may occur. Other children may complain of headache and chest pain due to intensity of the coughing. Let's now look at the comparison stage, which is the last stage here. Okay? Both severity and frequency of paroxysms decrease, but cough and hoop may persist for several months. Appetite may return, vomiting may cease, and the child may start gaining weight. What are the complications of whooping cough? Bronchial pneumonia, and this is the commonest. Permanent collapse and bronchial hole destruction may lead to bronchial stasis, which may be permanent. Malnutrition due to prolonged paroxysmal cough, which interferes with food intake and the coughing feeding becomes a problem. There can uh, so there is some development problem that may happen early in children whose diets are marginal at the start of the illness. So there can be some development problems that can be seen. Okay, so confusion, so let's say convulsions and hemiplegia may also be seen because we talked about cerebral hemorrhage that may interfere with uh, transmission within the brain. Surgical emphysema may also uh, be seen and then there can be also reactivation of the quincent primary tuberculosis. There are some investigations that can be done to confirm this diagnosis. So the investigation would include and the confirmatory one is a diagnosis that is confirmed by positive culture of bodetella pertussis on the bodete gun medium cough plate. Fluorescent antibodies in stained post nasal pharyngeal specimen can be taken also to confirm, to confirm the condition. How can this condition be treated? Antibiotics started early may shorten course of the disease and reduce the period of communicability. So antibiotics started late do not alter the course of the disease. Some of the antibiotics that can be given include erythromycin, 20 to 40 milligrams per kg body weight, and penicillin, 100 milligrams per kg body weight, and chloramphenicol, 50 milligrams per kg body weight can be given. 
we have some supportive treatments that can be given to the patient as well. Okay, and these can also help reduce mobility and mortality. So skilled nursing care and feeding is very, very important in this condition. You have to monitor for apneic spells, which need immediate clearance of the airway and manual respiration if the need arises. Mild sedation with phenigan or phenobarbital helps the patient to rest and reduces the paroxysmal cough. This will then allow for feeding of the patient, since when the patient is coughing, it becomes difficult to feed the patient. You can also do some gentle suctioning of the mucus and the stringy viscid saliva can be removed using cotton wool. The patient due to compromised airway may need oxygen and intravenous fluid if vomiting severely. This is to help reduce dehydration. How can this disease be prevented? Using vaccination, DBT, diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus. So through vaccination, the disease can be prevented. So you need to know that adverse reaction may occur such as fever, encephalitis, and convulsions when you give up this vaccine. So once this happens, no further vaccination with this vaccine as it may lead to permanent neurological disorder. I thank you most sincerely for your concentration. Please remember you can replay the video and listen again. And when you have problems, you are free to contact us so that we can help you. We thank you because you have been concentrating and also suggest topics where you're having problems within the curriculum so that we can help you um, understand or have a good perspective of those lessons. So we have been looking at whooping cough and uh, those slides that you have just seen flashing there, they were the ones that we were looking at. Hopefully, as you are praying, you are also able to, also able to write the notes. Otherwise, notes can still be sent directly in our Google Class and uh, can also be sent directly to your WhatsApp groups. So, thank you very much for your concentration and we shall link up in the next uh, lesson.